So today we're going to be talking uh, Joseph. Uh, let me look at this something. This this uh, this connection. This uh, this connection kind of disoriented uh, all this morning. He said, uh, "We are the coming of Jesus. Joseph obedience to God." So the topic today is coming of Jesus. Joseph obedience to God. You know the hardest thing to do in life is obedience. We have to go back to the beginning. We have to go back to heaven. When uh, when uh, God created the heaven, when God created the heaven, well, not this heaven on this earth, the heaven, 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 heaven. When God created it, then He, he created the angels, and they all were working very simultaneously. They were working in unison. But there was one of the angels who was kind of disobedient. You know, like children, you have so many kids, one or two of them is have to be disobedient. So this one of the angels was disobedient. He was given a very prominent role. And he disobeyed God. That was the first war that I ever fought in the whole entire world, heaven and earth. The Bible said there was war in heaven. And Satan was fought against it. He was defeated. He was cut out to the earth. Now, when he came to the earth again, he was very manipulated, very destructive. Then God was very upset. When you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, God destroyed the heaven and the earth again. And verse 2 he said, And he sent the Holy Spirit to monitor the whole earth and see what was going to say. The whole earth was void. Everything was destroyed. The whole earth was void and without anything. And after the Holy Spirit, he God started recreating the earth. And he said, Let there be this, let there be that. Day by day, started organizing the whole system. Then he put a man in the garden. That same angel was not happy. They had been cast from heaven, it because he trouble. He came to this garden very deceptively. He asked the woman, the God said, should not eat the fruit, or we should not even touch it. You know, the strategy of the devil is to make us to doubt the word of God. Even your own ability. You hear other people committing suicide, people do this terrible thing. When you start doubting your ability, your hope is lost. It doesn't matter whatever you are doing. As I always tell my wife, success does not come overnight. They come, I tell my children, I say, little by little, little by little. If you want to be rich overnight, you are going to kill yourself. So it come bit by bit by bit. There is a period in your life you have to suffer. There is a period of life you come stability. So this angel now deceived this woman. Well, God judged them and cast them out of the garden. Because God has loved us. Why will he be judging his own children he loves? He has to do that. After that one, huh? God started looking for a redemption in heaven. He said, Who will go for us? Jesus raised us and said, I will go. He showed him the picture. Jesus was not born to acquire kingdom, to be the masters, to become rich, to have a private jet in that time to read. To write the best, and many people try to misconstrue the Bible. Jesus Christ write a very, Jesus had a wonderful suit. People say that one, the bed that without steaming. They try to deceive themselves and deceive others. Our Christianity is not about weight, it's not about money. Jesus Christ didn't come to acquire weight, he didn't come to build palaces, he didn't come to build the kingdom of this earth. So, after that one, everything was not being done. Just God sent the, the, the angel. Gabriel, the faithful angel, and Michael, the archangel, they are the faithful angel. They started looking at the whole earth. Who can we find? Last week, we saw the find the virgin girl who was betrothed to be married. But they were not yet married. She became pregnant. Oh, oh. There's a problem. Joseph will be there. We're going to focus on the second part today. This young man, now you have a wife to be married. You know, today, even today, <laughs> you see, find the person that is, is, mad, is pregnant, we begin to laugh. I remember one of our Christian brothers here, the daughter became pregnant, and he has to hurry, hurry to do the wedding. But everybody already knows she was pregnant because he tried to hide it during the wedding. Everybody was talking and said, Did you want this girl to have committed abortion? What is wrong with you guys for heaven's sake? I was telling him, I said, I don't believe this stupidity. Leave this girl. If she is pregnant anytime, let her be pregnant. I'm glad she is pregnant. 
The father was feeling ashamed. I had to tell the father, I said, do not be ashamed. Why are you ashamed? You have, what are you to get have done abortion secretly without you knowing? Will you have been happy? Well, hey, brother, you don't understand. You don't, I said, you understand what? So, Mary was pregnant now. What do you expect Joseph to do? Joseph was contemplating, what do I do? Oh, man, you guys went to bed in the night. He said, I'm going to divorce this wife, this woman, secretly. I don't want anybody to know. Do you have any concern in your life? Maybe you are, you are having a job. It's being sleepless. Now, even to be a pastor, if sometimes I ask myself, what is the use of me running this ministry? What is the benefit? I'm not looking for the money. The people I'm teaching, are they learning? Are they hearing? Are they following what I'm trying to teach them? A lot of people have come to my house. A lot of people have passed through this ministry. They come and go and receive the miracle what they want. But Jesus Christ was to be born. But Joseph did not want to disgrace Mary. While he was contemplating, brothers and sisters, all of us may have one problem or the other that baffles us. We don't, have no, we don't have no solution. Joseph was a young man. He couldn't tell his father. He could not tell the mother. He could not tell his community. He didn't know what to do. He was confused. While he was sleeping in the night, the angel came and said, Joseph, son of David. You know, that's a big shame. He said, the child that your, 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 your betrothed wife is carrying is of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're talking about obedience. He said, don't divorce her, marry her. If he had told the community she was pregnant, they would have still had to death. You know what would have happened? Jesus Christ would not have been born. And lots of things would have gone haywire. That's why I have to be very careful how we judge people. It's very easy to judge. Sometimes I find myself doing it, but I have to tell, hey, hey, stop, stop. I have to tell myself, don't do that. Don't judge. Why are you judging? Who give you the power to say, we're not really judging. We are, we are trying to criticize the person and say something that is not right. But we don't have to do that. We don't know what this person has gone through. We don't know what made that person to be where he is. Any condition you find yourself, you are at the crossroad. What do I do? You might be you lost your job. What do I do? You are in the school. Your grade is not going as you expected. What do I do? You are working. You are not getting the promotion you wanted. What do I do? Joseph was really confused. I could see this young man. His heart was troubled. Let's look at Matthew chapter 1. Go ahead, my dear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 1, starting from verse 18. Now, okay. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was formed with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for what she is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means, which, is, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord has bidden him, and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. 
the word of the Lord. Thank you to God. You see here right now, Joseph was confused. He didn't know what to do. He was in a serious dilemma. What do I do? What do I do? That is when the Holy, the, the Holy Spirit, when in our modern age, and Jacob was stepping and said that and Jacob was a messenger from heaven, the angel of God, the good angel that came from heaven and said, Hey, Joseph, your wife is not a bad girl. She's a good girl. Marry her. That's obedient. Let us assume Joseph has said, Oh no, go, no way. I'm not going to marry Mary. I'm not, I'm not going to be responsible for this pregnancy and I'm not responsible. Anybody that tells me to marry this girl is a devil. I can never marry this girl. I'm going to tell my family member. I'm going to tell my father. I'm going to tell my mother. I'm going to tell my uncle. I'm going to tell everybody that this girl is a bad girl. I'm disappointed with her. Oh no, this girl must have been messing around. What if Jesus has said, no, no, I don't have nothing to do with this girl. Out of the passion of the Lord we have for this girl, he's very furious that this girl has been messing around. What would have happened? Let us think about that. That's how we say obedience to God. You know, the key to success today in anything you do is obedient. Satan was not obedient. That's what was called Satan. It was called the Lucifer, the monster, the bright star of God in heaven. Disobedience really have caused a lot of people so many things. You know, there's a traffic red light. Obedience say when it's yellow, slow down and stop. No. People don't slow down. That is how they want to speed the highest. What they are speeding very fast, another person that is green, they hit the person. That is disobedience. Obedience say, honor your father and your mother. Disobedience. Children don't want to honor their father and their mother. Oh, I'm in America, where parents cannot touch their children. That child thinks he's smart, he becomes a rebellious child and he regrets his life. Then people go to work. Instead of them working, they are sleeping or cheating. And at the end of the day, they are caught. Then they are laid off. I give all this story all the time. I know this young man here. Instead of him to be working, guess what? He goes to work and be looking for things to do. And he was laid off. So we have to be very careful. And at the end of the day, he lost his job. A lot of people do things that are not obedient to the word of God. The whole world today is in serious trouble. There are the people driving by shooting. Last night in Dallas, yeah, a young man went to a gas station. Other people were trying to pump the gas and he started shooting them with bullets. They were probably with their parents and they are in the hospital right now, so as we are talking. That is disobedient. Police are going for that child right now. There are so many things that cause trouble in the whole world. Look at the Russia, Ukraine are just peacefully on their own. The devil possessed Putin and is trying to destroy Ukraine at all costs. These are disobedient. There are so many people today who are disobedient all over the whole world. But Joseph was not like that. He obeyed the Lord. Are we obeying God? Are we obeying God? That is the question we need to ask ourselves. If God is talking to you, say, see that man that is suffering? Send money to him or pray for that person. Somebody called me from Nigeria. He said, Your thoughts are very strong in my mind. I've been praying for you. Every day we praying. I was very troubled. I didn't hear from you. I said, Well, I had surgery. He said, Oh my God. The Lord, you are so you are right, you are good. We're just praising God. See, my spirit was troubled. Every day I was praying. I woke up in the morning, pray, afternoon, pray, night time, pray. He said, I couldn't rest. And I'm trying to call it, I cannot go through. After that period, I was in the, in the, I was doing operation, and I could not be able to even answer my question or call me. So the Lord said, God, I thank you. That is how God taught to us. When God asked us to pray, God may say, you send money to somebody. But what do you say? You may say, well, I don't have money to send. You know, in obedience, 
there is blessing. When you pray God, God will, so, God will so bless you. God may say, somebody is in need. You don't know the person. Just go ahead and, and support them or give them something. Just a little bit. You say, God, I'm not going to do it. That's disobedient. You know, the Holy Spirit urges. Go ahead and do that thing God is telling you to do. It doesn't, it doesn't use a very big, forceful language. It uses a small little, small little voice. A tiny little voice. You say, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. If you don't do it, he will leave you. It doesn't force you. But if it's Satan, he will push you. You must do it right now. You must do it. Go and drink right now. That's not God. Joseph will pray God. When I think about Joseph, I said, if I was in that shoe, what would I have done? If you are in that shoe, what would you have done? You know, if Joseph is behind the scene, we don't hear much about Joseph. But Joseph is equally important. Without Joseph, the salvation we enjoy today, we would have enjoyed it. All the blessings we get in Jesus' name, they all came through the good father. You know, there are so many children who need foster parents. Are you fostering a child? Are you adopting a child? You are a good person because he takes a good heart. Joseph was a foster, a foster father to Jesus Christ. And he was a good husband to Mary, a woman you don't go to bed with, and the woman is pregnant. How do you feel? You'll be angry, be furious. You say, this girl is a devil. She has to die. But Joseph was not like that. Brothers and sisters, we need to learn from the life of Joseph. Obedience to God. Obedience is very hard. But doing it is very easy when you obey. There is joy. Is God telling you to become a pastor? Is God telling you to go and teach people some, some ministry work? Is God telling you to pray? Is God urging you to give? Is God urging you to do something? Where you hold your hand and say, no, I can't do it. Are you in that position? The Lord is calling every one of us today to one ministry or the other. There are so much you need in this world. There are so many people who are so much in their poverty. So many people who are sick to go to the hospital. So many people who are poor. So many people who are going through one problem or the other all over the whole world. Even in this country, that is so rich country. It's God laying in your heart. If you cannot give, you can pray. And God can touch somebody's heart. That person can give money. Brothers and sisters, obedient. Joseph obedient is a lesson for us all to follow. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And when you are doing God's will, there is something that comes with it. Romans chapter 5, 1 to 8. Praise the Lord. If you are doing God's will, something comes with it. That's what Romans is going to tell us. Romans chapter 5, starting from verse 1. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation, and this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. When we were utterly hopeless, helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for all sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. The word of the Lord. Thank be to God. 
You know, peace. I always tell people, some people come to me, Pastor, I want to do this thing. What do you advise me to do? And I throw the question back to them. How do you feel in your heart that this thing you want to do? How do you feel? Some people will tell me they don't have peace. I say, peace is the umpire that you are doing the will of God. If you don't have peace in your heart, whatever you want to do, God is not in that business. So, every one of us may have difficulties, but when we say yes to God in that condition that is urging us to go, is urging us to go, if we now say yes, we have that peace. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Having that peace is very, very important. So that way he says, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Because of what Christ has done for us, there is peace. And so because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege, where we, are now, where we now stand and confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. It's not only in this world we are looking up to, but we are looking to heaven where we will meet God one day. As I say every time, if only in this world we have hope, our Christianity is in vain. The, the, the modern telepreacher, the Benny Hins, the others, they tell you, you have to give one million dollars to be born again. You have to do this. So I they tell you, I have this big private jet, I have this suit, I have this, that, I have that. No, that's not Christianity we preach. That is our courtism today into the church. Jesus Christ never tell people to give money. You see, Jesus Christ was not rich. And every day, whatever he needed, he had the power to command everything to come. Brothers and sisters, the confidence we have that we are going to share God's glory with him in heaven. We cannot rejoice too when we run into problem and trial, for we know that they help us develop endurance. You know, when we have problems, what do we do? We pray. You know, we have faith. We believe. We trust God. We wait. It's not easy to wait. It's not easy to say, I have to do something. I told us a story all the time, those of us who have been with me for this many years, that there's a lady in my village, Richard. Richard is married today to a very wealthy man. Richard waited for many years, like she was becoming an old lady. The mother was so worried and she was not able to have a husband. She was worried. And Richard herself was worried. Like it was an old lady. This man came from nowhere. She said, I'm looking for a mature girl to marry. He married Richard. I think Richard probably had about eight children or five children or six. She just mentioned, the only in Houston. And the man became so worried. And uh, might because of the wife, I don't know, become very well. It's still worthy right now. They have a house in Houston. They, they go all over the whole place, all over the whole world. Sometimes when they are there, I do call them. I, I greet the husband. I say, my sister, because we are from the same village. He was my uh, immediate senior sister's uh, very good friend. This girl married and God bless her. All those people that married before her, they are out there. Some of them didn't have children because they were in a hurry to marry. But that time she endured faith. Everything we are waiting for, God has the reason for it. We may not understand what God is doing. Joseph had to learn to have endurance, had to learn to have faith. The, the choice I make right now is a good choice. If I don't marry this girl, what is going to happen? What are you doing? Eat the angel. I said, Joseph, marry Mary. What up? If he has said, oh, no, I'm not going to marry Mary. Nobody can tell me that. Let us assume Joseph had refused. Just for the sake of argument, Mary would have been killed, the child would have been killed, the father would have born them, and said they were evil, they were witches. Very, very careful how we judge people. It's very easy to judge people. People that be very easy to judge Mary in her generation and say, oh no, this girl is a bad girl. But listen, she wasn't a bad girl. I think we don't understand. Would that be our son? Would that be our job? Sometimes you may lose your job. You say, God, why? But God has, God has a reason for everything. And this soul will not lead to disappointment. If we truly hope in God, 
we put confidence in God, we have faith in God, it will never lead to disappointment. I can assure you of that. I can assure you of that. It will never lead to disappointment. But it may take a long time more for you to get what you want. We know how dearly God loves us because He has given us the Holy Spirit to fulfill our hearts with His love. The hope we have in Christ, the faith we have in God, will never lead to disappointment. In a sin, if you need to disappoint and look at it, everything is not working right. Pastor, you don't understand. This is not working right. Bishop, you don't understand. Things are not working right. No. Look at my mate. Look at what they are doing. Look at I, I, I'm older than that man, that woman. Look at what they have achieved. You know, during the week, one of my Christian brothers sent me an article. And he said that this man was, was so disappointed was so depressed because of disappointment that he wasn't doing very well. This man had a house, he had so many children, he had a wife, he had a car, and he was doing well to the average person that see him on the street. But to himself, he felt he was not doing very well. So he just got depressed, couldn't go to work, couldn't eat, he couldn't do nothing. The wife was worried. The wife went ahead and booked for a cancer and said, my husband changed. This is not the man I married, he's a different man. He went to the counselor and when the counselor asked him, What is your problem? The wife was not there. He said, Why well, stay outside? The counselor said, Why are you depressed? He said, No, I'm not successful. The man said, Why, What makes you to think you're not successful? He said, oh, my, my mate have private jet, they have a mansion, they are traveling to Vasi every day. Here I am in this village with this little house and everything. He said, Is that what makes you to depressed? He said, Yes. He said, My life is a failure. Okay, the counselor said, I cannot help you, but there are things I want you to do for me. Right now, I'm going to give you one more to help you with this assignment. Go back to your secondary school. Those of you that went to secondary school with you, go to that class, the year you graduated, write all the names of the people there, as many as you can find. Go to your school and look for their names. And as many names as you can get, go to social media, go to wherever you can, go and find out where they are today in this world. Try to ask everybody that you are sending for the next one. Don't go to work. They are not search for their name. After one month, come back with what you find. We will talk. So the man came back. He said 20% of them are already dead. You would have gone to school with. He said that some, some of them were psychiatric. They were, they were having mental problems. And some of, them were ho- some of them were homeless. Some of them married. They never, had, they, they never had children. And some of them were unemployed. And some of them were also very, very successful, but 2% of them, they were also very successful. And at the end of the day, he's among the successful one. So when he, when he brings this to the cancer, the cancer will say, show me where you are now, okay? You are among the, let us add you to the, the, the dead one. He said, no, God forbid, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Why will I die? He said, let us add you to among the people that never had children. They've been married for the same time you married. They never had children. He said, no, no, no. no. No, 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 no. Okay, let us add you to people who are homeless. He said, no, no, no. Let us add you to people who are, who are, who are having psychiatric problems, who are in the mental home. And the man said, no, no. He said, okay, are you successful now? He said, the man started jumping on. He said, thank you very much. You have helped me. He came and he was singing. The, the, woman, the woman went to hug the, the, hus- the wife, hug the counselor. He said, thank you very much. My husband is back. My husband is back. He asked the counselor, what did you do? He said, I didn't do nothing. All I just asked him is to reflect on his life. You know, sometimes we, we, don't, we don't reflect on our life. Oh, this is me, Sister Elizabeth. I suppose I have, my husband is a bishop. I suppose I have private, have private jet. Look at all these pastors wife. They're supposed to have private jet. <laughs> my, my husband doesn't have private jet. He doesn't even have a big house. He doesn't have a big mansion. <laughs> what type of pastor is this one? <laughs> what type of church is this? <laughs> look, at, look at this pastor's wife. My husband started ministry with that one. Go and look at people that you know, they were born at the same year with your husband. People that went to school with him. Look at people you went to school with. Look at all of them. Some of them never had children. Eh, eh, I'm supposed to have 10 grandchildren. Eh, I don't have 10 grandchildren. My children are supposed to be having a private jet. But what are people that never had children? One of my wife's friends came and said, My wife said, You are a blessed woman. My wife worked there for a long time before she got married. She had a very sad period in her life that almost led her to madness. But when she got married, one of her friends came and said, 
my sister rejoice. Don't get this. Don't get disappointed. Rejoice. Even if your husband is not here, your husband will come and marry you one. He will come and meet you one day. Guess what? He said, "I'm married before you, more than ten years before you. Here I am. I don't even have a child. I wish I had a child, and my husband is not even here." Brothers and sisters, unless we look at other people's life critically, we look at them with good eyes, not with with, with an evil, uh, greedy eyes. We will never know how good God is. Us. That's why the Bible says, "Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done." So it's very important that we learn to rejoice. Joseph had to obey God, otherwise he would have been sad all the rest of his life. You married this wife right now, cannot go to bed with her, with the joy of every young couple. But in marriage, there was no sexual relationship. This child is pregnant, this woman is pregnant, I don't even have no desire towards her. What is going on? What about she stupid, stupid marriage is this? But because of his obedience to God, Whatever you are going to brothers and sister, be obedient. I know Christmas is coming now, next week, or day after next week is Christmas. A lot of people are feeling sad, they are killing themselves, they are getting drunk because they don't want this thing, because it's the commercial world, it's advertising, buy this, sales, as I tell my family, sales will never end. The day sales end, the economy will end. The sales is constantly on. They say so, so don't kill yourself because you cannot buy that in today. Be happy with what you have. Rejoice. Share the little one you have with your family, with your friend, 
And whatever God speaks to you to give, do it. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I don't know where you are hearing this word from. If you have known Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I don't know how you feel about your life. Give your life to Jesus truly and be content. The Lord cares for you. Amen. Are you sick? The Lord is able to heal you. Amen. He may not heal you the way you, <coughs> the way you expected, but God will do whatever He say we do. Amen. He may not do it at the time you want. Are you married? You haven't had children? God will give you children. He may, not, he may not give you children right now. Are you looking for a husband? You haven't found a husband? God will give you a husband or wife. Are you looking for a job? Are you in school? You are not able to pass the day you want to pass? God will make it to do, do for you. Oh God, why do you be obedient to Him? <clears throat> Read your Bible. Pray. Don't give up your life. Don't disappoint yourself. Don't kill yourself. This uh, Perry is one of these black guys that make uh, this uh, special this uh, movie. And he has a studio in Atlanta. He said a few years ago, he felt the business was not going well. He wanted to kill himself. You see, he already make a to just kill himself and say, Life does not want living. You see, when he heard somebody that was worse than him, that made him to come out of his suicide mission. He said, can you imagine now, if he has killed himself that time, he would have missed all these blessings that come later on. So we're talking about this guy, a uh, in a uh, boss who committed suicide. He said, what would have made this guy to commit suicide? A young boy, 40 years old, was born in 1982 here. What would have made him to commit suicide? And he looks successful to everybody. He has a wife. The wife is very beautiful with beautiful three kids. And they're able to pay their everything. What if you made this child to commit suicide? He said, don't kill yourself, whatever you are feeling right now. Because this time, a lot of Americans commit suicide. They are taking a lot of drugs. I don't know how you are feeling in your country. I don't know how you, are, how, how you think the world is treating you. Perhaps I don't get discouraged. Joseph would have been depressed. They say, oh no, I, I made a mistake. I wouldn't have looked at this young girl when she was young. Don't be discouraged. No matter how your life turned out to be, God has a plan for you. God will never fail you. God has never failed us. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I'm sorry for the system disappointing us today. The Lord has a reason for everything and everything. The Bible says, give thanks to God. I'm going to ask the bishop to pray for us again. And in this season of uh, people getting crazy because of Christmas, that God will give us peace to enjoy this one we have. And I don't think we have failed. We should look at our mates. People who went to secondary school with, either primary school or university. Look at people you are better off than. Don't look at people who are better than you. Then you have a position to thank God. Whatever you are able to eat, whatever you are not able to eat. I was, we were watching a, a television program. Somebody put a sand in the plate. He didn't have food to eat. You know, I know, I told my sister, not every sand has to be some special clay. Those clay contain potassium, contain uh, calcium, contain different things. And uh, they were eating it. That's all they could eat. They put in the plate like it was food. They were eating the sand or the clay. You're better out of that. We don't eat clay like that. Or the one we are playing young, we eat this clay, we call it egg holo. I don't know if you if a, a, a bishop remember that one, egg holo. Yeah, so pre pregnant women used to eat it those days. But when I was very young, my grandmother was always eating it. I was also, I was also following her to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so we put it by the fireplace. When my grandmother caught a little bit, I had to go and cut a small little piece. <laughs> we put it in our mouth. <laughs> so we got a body to something. So let Bishop, let Bishop pray for us and I ask you to give your life to Christ if you haven't known him. And let Christ just fill your heart. Let us, let us also remember, uh, Papa, remember uh, Sister Fina, uh, Dr. Fina, whose birthday was during the week. Maybe because of the system problem, she may not, she was not able to reconnect. Yes, sir. No, we should remember her. Yeah, just Mrs. Smith uh, uh, did a party on Friday. Father, we thank you for your word. is faithful. Yes, Lord. Yes, 
Yes. What we are counting and measuring and made and many that you are doing more. Yes. This is the God, uh, the God of multiplication, the God of increase, the God of continuity, the God of favor. We worship you this morning. Amen. So, the word is spoken to us. The privilege of hearing the word, the grace of hearing the word. Yes, Lord. The opportunity of hearing the word. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For giving us grace to continue in this ministry through the years, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. For his own work, for his support, which he has always given, Lord, we say thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For those who could call in today and those who could not for one reason or the other, Lord, we pray for them. Yes, Lord. The vaccine and other, we pray for them. Yes, Lord. And God will increase the grace upon each and every one of them. Amen. Yes. That it will fall in the good side of our heart to bring forth fruit that will last for eternity. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We cannot thank you enough for the earth is yours and the fullness thereof, and all things are yours therein. Yes, Lord. You made us the apples of your eyes. Yes, Lord. You made us the peculiar people. Yes, Lord. You made the covenant with us that will not be able to satisfy us to put them in our Yes, Lord. When we see that Yes, Lord. Yes. Upon the rock of greatness, upon the rock of fulfillment, upon yes. the rock of eternity, in yes. Christ Jesus, Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. So we are thankful for the many great things you've done. Yes, Lord. We pray for all those who are hearing your word through the internet. Yes, Lord. All over the world, your word is being spoken. May they also be blessed. May they be humble. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray that God, as people celebrate Christmas this year, they will remember the love of the world. Yes, Lord. It's also a way that they should perish to give your son Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. That men and women will seek for that love that brings salvation to their hearts. Yes, Lord. That bring them to repentance. Yes, Lord. That bring them to a relationship with you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, let it manifest in the hearts of men and women all over the world. Let them have the purpose of celebrating Christmas. Yes, Lord. That it is because salvation. Yes, Lord. Salvation of the household. Yes, Lord. Give people joy. Give them peace and perfect all understanding. Yes, Lord. But in that case, the peace of God is good will towards men. Yes, Lord. Let men and women experience that peace and perfect all understanding. Now, whatever situation they may be going through, they will look up to you. Their yes, Lord. That they are set up from you and you alone. Yes, Lord. So that men and women will have courage to trust in you, to believe in you, to wait on you, not to depend on you. Yes, Lord. Know that you are more than enough for all situations. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord. We pray that God will bless this ministry that is blessing people all over the world. Yes, Lord. We pray that God will to bring in men and women to be blessed. That they will call in every Saturday at the right time at the right moment. We also want to thank you for the technology that is available that your work can be spread. Yes, Lord. We also want to thank you for everything you have put in place to honor your work and yes, to honor your people. Yes, Lord. Father, we are grateful. Thank you, Lord. Your love for us is beyond our comprehension. Yes, Lord. Praise is an honor we give to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Keep us humble. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, your blessing rests upon the bishop, that your favor rests upon him and his family, and we bless them and cause their gift to be full in Jesus' name. And I remember Brother Valentine's daughter, who just graduated yesterday, where as you bless her, and as you look forward to the next career level, the get graduated from university, I give her the grace to do the right thing and to follow you. And whatever part you are living her, Lord, let her find favor with you with man. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless everyone of all. I want to thank all of you for your patience, for your love, and for your continuity. May the Almighty God bless us.
you get the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. We appreciate you all. When upon my pillows you are tempestuous, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, can't tell me. Jesus name.